I want this to be a speech that you remember. And not because it was too long and boring, but because you were fully present, right here, right now. So I want everyone to take a moment, right now, to yell out and congratulate these amazing graduates that are here. Give them all a round of applause. Yell out. Thank you. 
the CPA firm. Then, to both my husband's and my surprise, eight years later, I woke up one morning and realized that I was supposed to be a therapist. So I began that journey, which has led me here today. I love what I do. Love it. I will not lie and tell you that it is all good. It isn't. However, the passion that I have for helping others on their journey is immeasurable, and I believe that others can see that passion in me. Be not a friend. Going back to that speech, that part earlier in my speech when I talked about the brain remembering anything the way we want it to, a month ago, before I began writing this speech, I walked in the door one evening and my 12-year-old son said, Mom, I found a paper that you wrote. I was immediately curious, which is, by the way, a problem that I had. I walked over, and as I took the paper, I noticed that it was written in 1990, my sophomore year in college. As I began reading the paper, to my amazement, the story that I was reading was much different than the story in my head, and the one that I had been telling myself and others for 20 years. It was a philosophy paper about the journey I was on, trying to decide if I really wanted to be an attorney. I cannot tell you how shocked I was to see that the other profession I was considering to become was a therapist. The paper is very analytical and logical, surprisingly well written. I don't think I could find something that well today. And it was very clear that being a therapist was something that I did not believe that I could do successfully for a variety of reasons. And that was surely true then. I convinced myself that being an attorney was the right choice for me for a number of reasons, but what I was really passionate about would not remain silent. So here I am. Be not afraid. Over the last year, as I began my newest project of opening a retreat center, I have many, many times felt an overwhelming sense of fear. And I tell myself, be not afraid. You know in your heart that this is your path. You are never alone. This has always been in your path. I've chosen to not regret my life, but to see all of it as part of my journey. Had I become a therapist right after getting my undergraduate degree, I don't believe for a second that I would be here today. Everything I have experienced has brought me right here, right now. Be not afraid. Now take a moment to think about the person who knows you best and all the ridiculous choices that they make. It doesn't need to be a long list. Just come up with a few things. Are you ready? I didn't mean your spouse or your, <coughs> or your children. I meant you. Now you have to make a new list, right? <laughs> have integrity to yourself and others. Examine yourself. In your relationships. We all have blind spots, and you aren't going to see all the areas that you need to work on. Ask for help in seeing those areas. This isn't a fun process. It is hard, sometimes downright painful. Four times a year, I take several days off with a friend to work on those areas. A week before we start our process, each time, she walks up to me and says, I don't want to be a better person. And I say, yes, you do. <laughs> and she says, you're right, I do. I believe that it is important that we learn ourselves well enough to accept responsibility <coughs> for our part in all interactions, then be able to tell our part to those people close to us, to work on surrounding ourselves with people who also want to accept the responsibility for their part. Have integrity to yourself and others. There will be things that happen after you leave here today as you are ready to start this leg of your journey. These things could deter you, bring doubt into your mind and your life, or stop you in your tracks. I experienced that. With, within months of graduating from friends, I lost a baby and escaped my own death. Effects of these I still experience today. What I learned during, during those moments, as I thought my life was ending, was about letting go, about surrendering. 
letting go of what we truly have no control of, to stop resisting. We think we know what that means until we truly have to do it. We think we are letting go of our children as we become young adults, but we rarely do. We hold on and worry about the choices they will make, and we do all that we can to try to prevent them from making them. We keep living their lives for them. As we age, we do this to our parents as well, second-guessing their choices, thinking that we can control their decisions. How about the arguments you've had in your relationships? Have you let those go? Do you still wish that person was something that they aren't? Let go of them. Letting go, surrendering, requires faith. Faith in a power greater than ourselves, or at least in other people. Faith that despite what happens, that it is a part of our journey. Let go. There are two songs that have been with me since I was a little girl, that have guided me every step of the way. One of these songs you have heard me mention several times already today. In order to let go, we all need something to help us attain and sustain that release. Affirmations of our resolve to release the need for control. Control that can burden us to the point of paralysis. These are my affirmations. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die at first. You shall wander far in safety. Though you do not know the way, you shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see the face of God and live. If you pass through raging waters, in the sea you shall not drown. If you walk amidst the burning flames, you shall not be harmed. If you stand before the power of hell, and death is at your side. Know that I am with you through it all. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me, and I shall give you rest. And the second song is by Rogers and Hammerstein. Excuse me. When you walk through the storm, hold your head up high. And don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm is a golden sky and the sweet silver song of the lark. Walk on through the wind. Walk on through the rain. Though your dreams be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on with hope in your heart. And you'll never walk alone. You'll never walk alone. These songs, unbeknownst to me at the time, became the affirmations for my life. Along with the things that I was born with, curiosity, creativity, being passionate about whatever I do, and a strong intuition, these songs reinforced my belief to follow my heart, to never give up. Following our heart, our inner knowing will always take us where we are supposed to go. And now it's time for the quiz. Yes, I was serious. <laughs> so what are those four things that I want you to walk away with? Be alive. Right here. Right now. Be not afraid. Have integrity to yourself and others. Let go. Peace to all.